I'm Mark Ryan, this is Super Review, and this is the new Tanch Gym Origin. And I am that I think is a bit of a return to form for the brand Tanch Gym. So I don't know, it was like back in 2019, as far as I can tell, that they originally released the Tanch Gym Oxygen, which was, I think, somewhat of a somewhat of a, a an under underappreciated I am at the time, but eventually people kind of realized like this is one of the best dynamic drivers ever made. And then a couple years later, in 2021, they later released the Tanch Gym HANA 21 version. And for a long time, honestly, like that's been one of the best, the go-to dynamic drivers for me, especially at the price range of around 200 bucks. But I don't know, arguably you could say that Tanch Gym's been sitting on their laurels a little bit. Um, I don't know, everything that they've released over the past couple of years since the HANA 21 has, in my opinion, been a little bit of a letdown. But... Spoiler alert, that is not the case here for the Tanch Gym Origin, which I think is not just as good as their best DDs that I've heard before. I think this is probably the best dynamic driver that they've released. And um, well, is it the best dynamic driver that's out right now? We're going to talk about that. So uh, like all my other reviews, this is a live stream. If you're here now live, how's it going? Uh, actually, I shouldn't say like all my other reviews because like a lot of my reviews, no, unlike. Anyway, this one's live. Uh, glad to have you here. Um, some things up front, I guess. Maybe the, the price on this. So it is a single dynamic driver. I am. And the price here on the Origin is $260. So it is pricier than its previous brethren, I suppose, its predecessors. And I don't know. I guess that's important to some degree. But I think it's still you know well below $300, which is maybe where you start comparing it with more expensive stuff. Um, but I digress. I guess just a quick shout out to Tanch Gym, by the way, for sending this IM for review. Um, I've got them linked in the description down below if you want to check them out. But otherwise, let's dive to the table and start talking about the physical form factor on this IM. We'll talk about the sound quality. And then I'm going to bring in some other IMs for direct comparison, including the Tanch Gym HANA 2021, the Simgot EA1000, and of course, uh, my, my kind of go-to at this price range right now, which is the binary cross giz audio chopin all right let's start with the origin here all right so like the others i mentioned obviously this is a single dynamic driver there are going to be some very strong similarities in the build quality and the form factor with the hana and the oxygen that said this is actually a pretty different shell um, some notable things that might not be obvious here just looking at it is that the shell on the origin is a little bit larger i would say just like mildly larger in these sort of dimensions that you're seeing, but also notably larger in these dimensions and sort of the depth. Um, I know a lot of people have had issues with the nozzle depth on the HANA and the oxygen. I personally didn't really have too much of issues with it. It really does come down to like which tips I fit. Um, but here with the origin, and I apologize if I get these names incorrect a little bit, um, here with the origin, they've definitely gone with a longer nozzle, but not just a longer nozzle. It's like there is like this whole sort of cavity here that protrudes outside of the core cavity. So the entire IM is significantly thicker front to back. Um, and that does have some impact on its fit. Um, I wouldn't say that it fits worse than the HANA 21 or the Oxygen. I would say that for my ear, it fits like a pretty typical dynamic driver IM, which is to say, look, there's no like semi-custom molding or anything like this. So it's not going to lock into the folds of your ear the way that something like, I don't know, a Kiwi Ears Orchestra Light might, right? for example, um, but, oh my gosh, there's a lot of wind. Hopefully you didn't hear that whistling. But anyway, um, the fit stability on this, I would say is like, is kind of just so-so because of that. Um, it's also, you know, somewhat on the weighty side. I should have brought out my scale. I know some people have asked me how heavy these things are and they are pretty weighty for sure, but I don't know that they're like that much weightier than the other kind of all stainless steel dynamic driver shells. So yeah, that's just kind of like the, the basic stuff. I guess I'm, while I'm on the topic of fit, let me give you guys a fit demonstration. So let me plug this thing in my ear. And uh, here's where I should have been talking about how this thing fits. Yeah, you can see it's still a pretty small little shell. It fits in there. And I even get it tucked just a little bit back in there inside my concha. But because the nozzle is a little bit on the long side, um, the entire earpiece doesn't fit behind, what do you call this? This little, little anti-tragus catch. Um, or usually I like it when an IM can sit behind there. And maybe if I pick the right tip I could get it to, but I don't know, most of the, all my tip rolling and stuff, this is pretty consistently how it fit. 
Now I have gone through a couple of nights with these things in my ears and they're not the most stable, but they're not like falling out and breaking seal constantly. So it's not really um, a thing that I would bring up any more so than your average dynamic driver shell. I would say maybe it fits a little bit better than the Oxygen and the HANA, but not too much different. Okay, so that is the fit stuff. I guess let's let's talk about the physical or the, the aesthetics. I'm, I'm doing this a little bit out of order. Maybe I'm a little bit out of practice and I apologize for that. Um, but let's talk about the aesthetics on this guy, which honestly, I really, really stinking like. Like it is just, it's a subtle look. And in a lot of ways, this might look, this might even make you think that you're just looking at the old HANA and Oxygen, but they have subtly done this thing, I think, better. Um, basically what you see here, what I, I see here, and hopefully it comes across in the camera, is that there's a subtle depth difference here between this matte finish and the glossy finish. And that just elevates it a little bit. I think also having that matte finish and glossy finish contrast elevates it quite a bit to the point that like this is like probably the best looking dynamic driver I can think of. It's not one of like the, the much more expensive Sennheisers. Um, just really, really dig the way it looks. It's nice and subtle. You know, even the word origin, I say, okay, it's big. It's not that subtle, uh, but there's a lot worse ways that you could pull that off. And maybe I'm more partial to this side, but I think that having kind of like the, uh, the asymmetrical look also further helps to elevate the aesthetic of this IM. Uh, the cable that it comes on is, honestly, it's one of my favorite cables, actually. Um, I've been using this cable. It's the same cable they included on the Tonstrom Cara early last year. And that's a, a cable that I've been using actually on my Chopin. You're gonna see that cable show up uh, again a little bit later. Um, but it's just a nice, light, you know, well-behaved cable. It's thin. And um, I don't know, there's not a whole lot to speak about it, except this basically just kind of behaves like a, a, a higher quality version of the Moondrop SSR cable. Um, and why are this is a little bit better than the SSR cable is you've got, of course, a small Y split. You do have a chin slider, although this will be my one complaint about this cable is the chin slider does not stay in place very well. You guys can get that right one day. Uh, and then you've got your preformed ear hooks up here with you know, pretty standard stainless uh, two pin hardware. And I guess on that topic, I will hi highlight real quick. It is a two pin cable. If you wanted to swap it out with another cable or replace it, you certainly could. Um, although in my opinion, I certainly wouldn't. I really like this cable. I think it's a good match aesthetically, um, but also just a really good behaving cable. And well, I think you should keep it on your IEM. All right, um, let me, Rudy wrap this back up and see if there's anything else I need to talk about the physical stuff. Okay, there is. Um, I didn't really talk about what's inside the box. This is the, the box, the packaging, if you care. Um, not that interesting. You do get a you know fairly nice carry case, although I'll be honest, this is much larger than I like. I certainly wouldn't be able to fit this into a pocket and it's not stackable. So um, this is something that makes more sense for somebody that only has one IM. I've got hundreds of IM, so not my ideal, but maybe it is ideal for you. I do like the magnetic clasp and the kind of like light terry cloth uh, texturing on the inside. Uh, it also comes with two different sets of ear tips. And you might notice I'm not using either of them. These are perfectly fine ear tips. These are Tanshim's typical, um, they call them TAPB auto pressure balancing or something like that. Um, they're nice ear tips actually, in terms of shape uh, and comfort, like they, they're made of a nice material. And then here they've got kind of like the wider bore version. And then over here is the narrower bore version. Uh, there, you'll get some like mild sound differences between these two, but honestly, like when I'm picking tips, it's almost like 99% about getting a good fit. And then from there on, it's about, you know, tweaking, tweaking the sound ever so slightly. Um, just don't expect massive sound differences. And on the topic of, not expecting massive sound differences. Well, let's talk about these nozzles. So the origin, I didn't even highlight this, but the nozzles do screw off. You can just kind of screw these off, swap them with these alternate nozzles they give you. And the nozzles do have different letters on them, which indicates that they probably have some sort of tuning differences. But I, when I measured these, they all measured the same. And um, so I'm not gonna, I don't know, I did not, and I'll say this, this is important to know, I did not actually spend any time listening to these different ear tips. Um, maybe I'm just too graph pilled at this point, but I'm, I don't know. If the difference isn't going to show up in the frequency response, I feel like I'm just gonna be sitting there twiddling my thumbs trying to make out a difference. And 
that's not really my idea of a good time. So while I appreciate the thought, um, I just stuck with whatever nozzles are on here, probably the last ones I measured, and uh, I was happy with it. That was how I reviewed this. If by any chance anyone out there thinks that I missed something dramatic because I didn't swap nozzles, um, I probably disagree, but I don't know. Let me know what you think. So yeah, that is the physical stuff. Let's now dive in and talk about the sound here on the Tanch Gym Origin. And I could, maybe I should, start by talking about the frequency response and the sound signature. So I just kind of mentioned briefly the frequency response not being different depending on which nozzles I chose. And I guess I can show that for you, right? So this is the frequency response of the Origin as I measured it. Here's with the S nozzles, and I'm going to throw on, on top of it, the D nozzle. So currently you're looking at both the S and the D nozzle graphs. And if you're not seeing two different graphs, that's because they line up exactly. This is kind of what I was talking about. Um, again, it doesn't really matter to me because I'm not really that into swapping nozzles and stuff. Um, but if you were looking for this IM because of the fact that it has multiple nozzles and you wanted to play around with the tuning, I don't think, frankly, you're going to hear much of a difference there. Uh, that said, what we, what we do get here, oh, let me get rid of this awful target, Sean garbage. Uh, anyway, what we do have here, uh, I think is a really, really well balanced tuning um, that frankly actually surprised me in a number of ways. So why did this surprise me? Okay. Um, well, okay, maybe it's just frankly one way that this surprised me. No, two ways. All right, two ways that this surprised me. One is that this is significantly less bass than what we got on the Tanch Gym Oxygen and the HANA 21. Uh, I think even less bass than we got on the original Tanch Gym HANA which was like the brighter, less bassy version of the HANA 21. So that's interesting. The other thing that's interesting is the way that the bass is tuned on this guy is, you know, all, it's kind of all the rage these days is to have the bass or have the mid range kind of flat up until around 200 Hertz. And then you have the bass go up here. The bass is kind of rising as early as like 300 Hertz. And that is a, a signature of frequency response that I think a lot of people, myself included, associate with kind of bloaty, boxy bass. Now, obviously there's not a lot of bass here, but that was kind of my expectation as I saw that. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if the bass is gonna be really soft on the origin. And if it is, that would be surprising, but it's not soft, okay? Um, let's talk about now the subjective aspects of the sound, which, Okay, I already mentioned that the tuning is, I think, very balanced. I think it's actually incredibly well balanced. This is, in my opinion, like probably the best tuned dynamic driver that I've heard. Uh, and just in terms of frequency response, and obviously as, as being close to my target frequency response, what I think is being neutral, but not boring, um, the HANA, or it's not, it's, I told you I was going to do it, uh, the Origin really does a really fantastic job. I would say that it leans a little bit on the bright side, which maybe some people would argue that my f target frequency response leans on the light, on the bright side, but I think it is versus my target frequency response, a smidge on the bright side. Um, not overly bright, just a little bit. And I think that that little extra bit of brightness does give the Origin while it has a nice balanced sound signature, it can give the S's in vocals, and you hear me even just saying S's, a little bit of a wetness to them. And it can perhaps even be a little bit on the sibilant side. I wouldn't say like distractingly so, but if you're comparing it with some other sets, some other sets can handle sibilance better than this does, but it really is tip dependent. And this is, I mentioned that tips can kind of play a part in that last 5% of sound and like getting the, the tweaks just right. That's where tips can actually have a pretty big difference in terms of like moving the IM um, in and out away from your eardrum can have, can make that difference depending on which IM you're talking about in the origin, almost called the HANA again, uh, is one such IM where I found switching tips with these, which I'm using C, uh, SpinFit CP100s. Uh, this is what worked out well for me. Now that said, I would not, if I were you, go out and buy SpinFit CP100s, expecting that that will be necessarily the best sound on this earphone for you. It just happened to be that way for me because, again, when it comes to these sort of minute differences, our anatomy is all different. I wouldn't, again, expect that that difference will be the same for you. All right. Um, anything else I wanted to talk about in terms of tonal balance? No, I just think that the bass is really well balanced with the tune. Um, again, this is not a bassy set. If you're looking for a bassy set, you might actually still prefer the HANA 21 or the Oxygen. Um, but if you're looking for something that's closer to neutral, a little bit on the bright and lively side, 
Well, that's what the origin is. And uh, I really like that. That's, that's exactly my bag. Okay, now let's talk about sort of the technical aspects. And that is where I think Tantium, honestly, has just kind of always been pretty standout. Even with their IMs that I don't love that much, like the, the Prism is one that comes to mind. They're just, I don't, they're doing something special with imaging. And I think that the origin carries that through. Um, the imaging performance and thing is just, it's awesome. It's standout. It's, it's excellent. It is atypical. It is better than most. Uh, and they do it without it being like overly sharpened and uh, crunchy at all in the treble. Okay. It is again, a little bit on the bright side, but I don't think that they overcooked it the way that some other IMs have. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, I think that versus your typical dynamic driver, you get a slightly more incisive sound here with the Origin, which carries through not just to the treble, um, but also to the bass impact. So I mentioned this is not a very bassy IM, and I mentioned that that tune of the bass could be interpreted or maybe predicted to be a little bit on the bloaty and soft side, but really the bass is quite tight and impactful on this guy. It's, again, not going to be a lot of bass, but if you're looking for some of that I don't know. This term came to my mind earlier today. I don't know if I'm going to stick with it, but I'm going to, I'm going to go with it right now. Kind of that, that belly breath, like that, like that, like it, you, you feel some of that physicality behind that bass and, and that, especially in the attack. And that'll come through, especially with things like kick drums. Okay. That's the aspect of bass that I want. I don't necessarily need a lot of bass. Sometimes you need a lot of bass to get that, but sometimes you can do it with a little bit of bass. And I think that the origin does a fantastic job of delivering that bass physicality without having a lot of bass. Maybe the bass that it kind of reminds me the most of, and this is gonna sound either like a like a like like a compliment or or a damning a damning with faint praise sort of thing. Um, but the bass that it reminds me the most of honestly is something like the Moondrop SSR, which is another IM that was not very bassy, but the bass character on it was really pretty addicting. And I and that's that's what I would describe this as. Um, anything else about the physicality? No, I mean, I think it's nice and incisive. It is, the imaging is really fantastic. You really do get this strong sense of space around the head and separation between instruments. Maybe it's a little bit on the, what's, what's the word I want to, it's like, there's almost like a, a little bit of a lack of cohesiveness between it, um, between the sound, but that's like really kind of like struggling to, to, to pull out nitpicks about the sound here because it's really just pretty satisfying, honestly. And so, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's what I think about the sound here on the Tanch Gym Origin. But like I mentioned, we're going to bring in some other IMs for comparison. Here is the Tanch Gym HANA 2021 edition. Uh, and I guess while I've got these two up here, I will highlight real quickly the differences in size so you can get a sense. Again, it's a subtle difference, but the Origin is definitely bigger. And then here's the difference in terms of depth. Definitely a big difference there. Okay. Uh, but that's not all. Of course, we've got the Simga EA1000. And this is one of the IMs that a lot of people are really excited about. I reviewed recently. I was pretty impressed with the imaging on this guy. Um, this one's kind of like challenging Tanstrom for the dynamic driver crown, even though I guess technically it is a dynamic driver plus a passive radiator. But We'll call it a DDIM for, for the sake of argument and because, honestly, it kind of behaves like one. Uh, and then finally over here, we've got the binary Cross Giz Audio Chopin. Um, this is the one IM on here that's quite a bit different. This is a hybrid IM. It's got, I believe, three balanced armatures and one dynamic driver for the bass. And, well, we'll talk about how these things compare right now. All right, so let's start by describing the HANA 21 versus the origin. I would say that the HANA 21, despite this thing coming out now two and a half years ago, like we're almost on three years old, this thing still stands up really, really well. Like again, the, the imaging stuff that, that Tanstrom really does well, very well on display here with the HANA 21. Um, the big differences are going to be like in the base levels. The HANA 21 is a much bassier IM, more of like your classic like laid back V-shaped sound signature, whereas the origin is a little bit on the slightly bright neutral side, okay? Um, I would say that the origin, probably because of that tuning, does actually do a better job of that image separation, or maybe specifically like the separation between instruments. Like the, the HANA still presents really wide and like kind of big in the head, but 
there's maybe more of a cohesive sound with this, whereas, again, I was kind of alluding to it near the end of my description of the origin, there is some, somewhat of a, of a lack of cohesion between the instruments, um, which can have the effect of like blowing out like the, the space between them, but can also maybe sound a little bit less natural, uh, is maybe how I could describe it, despite the, the tuning being, in my opinion, more neutral and more natural in tone. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of the differences between those two. Uh, if I had to pick between these two, frankly, I would pick the, the Origin, but again, the Honda 21 still stands up really, really well. Uh, all right, so the EA-1000, I just recently reviewed this guy and had a lot of really good things to say about this thing, right? Really nice, incisive stereo imaging, um, strong sense of separation between the sounds. If I'm being picky about it, it can be a little bit overcooked in the treble. And that's where I think the Tance Gym Origin does a better job, okay? Uh, I think the, the Origin does similar quality job with the image separation, maybe even a little bit better in terms of whatever that Tance Gym, oh, I hate saying stuff like this, but like there's, there is a Tance Gym magic to it. Um, I think that they even do a better job with stereo imaging, maybe more so like the front to back depth, but they do it without Again, the treble being a little bit overcooked like it is here on the EA-1000. I think if you're a fan of the EA-1000, um, you'll probably like the Hana or the, the Oxygen. Oh my gosh, the Origin. But there are some differences in terms of tonal balance. I would say that the Simcot is a little bit more on the V-shape sound signature wise, which is to say that there's a little bit more treble emphasis, a little bit more bass. So if you're looking for more of that bass character, the EA-1000 will give that to you. But I do think, again, the bass quality on the Origin is comparable um, and you just get it with a more balanced i think tasteful tune uh, but of course i would be biased toward that perspective um so yeah if i'm choosing between these two i know there's a bit of a price difference 220 bucks for the ea 1000 260 bucks for the origin uh, my money is definitely going to be on the origin personally i maybe i'm also a little bit biased because of well the origin is just a little bit extra pretty but uh yeah all right, anyway, so that is my thoughts there. Final comparison. The Binary Cross Giz Audio, Chopin. Um, I don't know, for some reason, whenever I, th I think of Chopin, I think of uh, the way that the announcer in Street Fighter II says Japan when you pick that stage. So if you're not familiar with that, be, be familiar with that, be my age. Anyway, um, so the Chopin is what I would say is my is definitely my pick at around 200 bucks. In fact, I would say this is probably my favorite. I am under 300 bucks. Uh, and so I, to me, it makes every bit of sense to compare it to the Origin, even though the driver configuration here is pretty different. So again, the Chopin is a hybrid driver configuration, three balanced armatures, one dynamic driver versus just one, just one poor little dynamic driver all by itself. But I think it does actually hold its own. That said, I actually still prefer the Chopin. So let's talk about how they compare. In terms of imaging performance, I actually do think that that is where the Origin does a better job. Again, it's got that, it's got, oh my God, the tangent magic. Oh my God, I'm, I'm saying these words. And as I'm saying them, I'm wishing I'm not saying them. I just don't have better words to say. Uh, it's got that special sauce that Tanshin does with the imaging performance that is really stand out here. Now, I don't think that the imaging is any slouch here on the Chopin, but it's just, it's good. It's very good. It's not stand out the way that it is here on the Origin. Apart from that, I gotta say, I think that the Chopin just kind of wins. Now there might be, again, some reason why you would prefer the oxygen, not the oxygen, the origin, uh, because the, the tonality is a little bit more on the balance side, whereas the Chopin is, it is, it is Harman, but like a better version of Harman, in my opinion. It's a warmer version of Harman. There's more bass here. Uh, and if you're looking for the bass here set, of all the, the, the four sets that I put up in here, I don't, I think probably the Hana would be the bassiest, but this would be, I think, the standout bass performance of the bunch because it's got a lot of bass emphasis, but it's really, really well controlled. It doesn't have any like bleed into the mid-range or anything like that. It doesn't really cloud up the tonality. It does maybe warm it up a little bit versus what you would get with a strictly Harman tune. But for me, that's actually for the for the better because I find the traditional Harman tune a little bit on the thin side and I really don't have that complaint with the Chopin. So versus these two, I think basically what you get with the with the the, the Chopin versus 
The Origin is just a more cohesive sound, which is, again, it's kind of interesting because this is a dynamic driver and people kind of describe uh, uh, um, coherency issues with hybrids sometimes. I don't really have that complaint. I think that you get a more cohesive sound where, again, maybe it does come at the expense of a little bit less separation between the instruments, but overall it just sounds more relaxed and right. Um, and where I have sometimes a little bit of issues with the treble on this being just a smidge forward again, especially in sort of like the S's sounds. Um, I don't have that issue at all here with the Chopin and it's just a really, I, I like this item a lot. I know I reviewed this one a few months ago. I was really high on it at the time and I don't think I've really come down on it. Like this is one that is staying the course with me. So well, amongst this, these four, these are all really good IEMs. I would very much enjoy listening to all of them, but if I were to rank them in terms of outright favorites, it would be probably like this, all right? I can't even fit them all here on my screen. Let's see, let's do them this way. That's not how you do it, but um, I would say my favorite, sneak, snuck up there. Uh, my favorite would be the Chopin. Next up would be the Origin. Next up would be the Hana 21. And finally, the EA 1000. So. I think that is going to do it for my thoughts here on the Tanch Gym Origin, which hopefully for the last time I've called by the wrong name. Um, yeah, just a really, really awesome IM. I love the form factor in this thing. Again, I think this is, of the bunch here on the table, the most beautiful IM here. Uh, and I think really it is probably the most beautiful dynamic driver IM that's not a Sennheiser IE600. Um, fantastic build quality uh, and then awesome sound. I love the balanced tuning of it. Probably the best tuned dynamic driver that I've heard. And then the technical performance is quite standout. Just, you know, maybe held back a little bit by being a little bit over hot in the that, that lower, lower treble S region. But generally, I really, really quite enjoy listening to the Tantium Origin. So I'm gonna give it a very, very solid four stars out of five. And if you wanna check it out, of course, I got it linked in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you haven't already and you like this video, please do hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, and I'll catch you on the next super review. Cheers.